everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, August 21, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We will be having a Time for Change call tonight, a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to talk about two stories and the one in between. A quote from Ramana Marishi, The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. It becomes the ego and all the world. So what he was talking about was the fact that what we are on the inside, say how we, what we feel about, what we believe, whatever our interpretations are, is what our outside world will be for us. And you can see the different variances. And so how people see their surroundings, their outside world. Now, you could have you know, 300 people, and they all see their outside world totally different than the next one. You see the diversity there? It kind of can become a dilemma for the civilization and the species. Why is that? Well, you've heard me say it thousands of times. It is our, the influence on these bodies. Okay? It's the influence. It's the ego mind, It is, which is an illusion. The mind created the ego to assist it in the illusion so that eventually we master it. Now, if you have somebody that doesn't even, that they have no, on, any comprehension on how to do any of this, so what do they do? They exist and operate in the external world the material physical world. That's what they do. They spend their whole lives that way. It's not, a, it's not a negative. And then they leave the body. And then they reincarnate again a few hundred years later or so. And then they come back in and they do another life. And depending on the course of that life on how things be, come into being, it depends on how they're able to become awake, aware. And then they uh, uh, comprehend the fact that they're going within to experience the God, the pure consciousness that they are. Now, every moment that we have in this life, We have the choice to respond to life from a completely new, alive, and freeing space that is born in the now. Or we can react from an older, unconscious, conditioned pattern that stems from a past story. Now, the choice is always ours in each second if we and when we respond from a fresh place of freedom or from a past conditioning. The type of story we are talking about is not that it's not that enjoyable fantasy fairy tale story that we all enjoy listening to around the campfire. It's that, that one that we drag around like an old ball and chain attached to a heavily shielded yet wounded heart. Doesn't there seem to be You know, there's always this infamous victim story, isn't there?
It's one most of us know all too well. It's the one that is fixated on how another wronged us or how we are struggling with money or unable to find the love of our life or create the career we really want. We often unconsciously believe that by repeating the story over and over and over again that it will help us to escape it, transcend it, or feel better about our poor, lonely, victimized selves. What we simply, we simply become more wrapped up in the ego's illusions of being trapped, helpless, and powerless. The good news is that we always have the power to transcend our story if and when we can become conscious enough to see who or what is truly creating it. Who do you think is creating it? You are. It's good to know that all of our stories were created by some life event, big or small, that actually happened. The event naturally occurred. Then the mind took over and invented its special, specific, positive, or negative meaning on top of the actual event. As a suggestion or an invitation, take this entire week to write down and notice all the stories you tend to repeat in your mind and to other people. This is a very powerful life-changing exercise. Notice if they are positive or negative stories. And who would you be without any of these stories? Now these stories are sl the, 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 they stick because something happened in your life that your mind judged as wrong or absolutely always right and found some sort of peace within that perception. However, when you hold on to any thought or idea about this life too tightly, you become overly attached and you miss this amazing universe that's happening now. Attachment always leads, always leads to some future suffering and it's, it is always your choice if you want to be free and manifest more of an ama amazing goodies or be stuck with the same old small tune Now you probably, most likely, just in this lifetime alone, we've all come across this. It's not like we're exempt from it. Keeping a story from your past alive takes a lot of work and will drain all of your energy. It will keep you living in the illusion and never awaken to the divinity within your being. This illusionary mind loves to create stories about stories. Heck, you may be even, you may be creating a story about this exploration of stories. The reality is, is that you are not this mind, nor your ego, nor your body, and certainly not an accumulation of all your stories. You're, our, you're much more than can be expressed in words. You are an infinite soul beyond the ideas of freedom and love. You are and always will be so much vaster than any story your ego could invent. You will continue to exist long after this story has been forgotten by you and the world. Your being is naturally expansive and completely free. Always has been. You have just been covering up your true infinite nature with stories. The tricky part in transcending any story is that 
Our ego loves the drama of an emotionally juicy adventure. It's like chocolate ice cream to a child. Our lives' traumas and deep issues are so personal, wild, crazy, and feel so real that they often make us feel unique and that we are even someone superior or special. Truth is, is that everyone was birthed uniquely super special. And we all have the same core issues deep inside. These core issues are about being unloved, unwanted, abandoned, and unworthy. What a great recipe to instigate massive transformation in one's lifetime. Now you may find yourself sticking to these issues because the mind gets busy entertaining the victim story instead of being fully curious about recognizing your divine infinite nature. These personal issues can make up a major part of who you think you are. So to let go of them, in many ways, can feel like letting go of your entire identity. If and when you drop the story, you would have to do the scariest thing of all. You'd need to totally reinvent yourself. Maybe this isn't such a bad thing. You could choose to only be loved, free, powerful, and without any limitations. Now, is this a challenge you would be willing to take on? Letting go of your story may feel like dying, yet in the end, there is no death without some kind of rebirth. How does one truly transcend their story? Well, just watch it. Do not participate in it. Notice if you are focusing on what you want or don't want. See how present you are to the now moment or just reprogramming yourself with more illusions from your past. The experience you have will always be created from your personal interpretation and universal perception. If and when you find that you are really stuck pulling energy into how you aren't enough of this or that, putting that energy out to it, and you may simply need some tools to shift your experience. It's like when we, you, you can catch yourself, okay? We all retell our stories over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's not like, oh, I'm going to tell my story now. It's not like that. It's almost automatic. It's, so when that happens, when you start finding yourself going into a story, stop retelling your story. Just stop doing it. Shift. When you hear yourself telling somebody your famous story that makes you feel small, powerless, or less than divine, immediately stop yourself. Even if you're in a mid-sentence. And as soon as you stop repeating your story, you stop giving it energy. And the story will soon wither away. Imagine, put up this You visualize it, this bright, glowing red stop sign every time you start to tell your story and have that flash repeatedly in front of you, right up in your face. Don't move a muscle. 
Be absolutely still and silent. Investigate deeper inside to discover where this story is coming from and what this part of you actually is yearning to feel, be, do, or have. So we all kind of become archaeologists. We become an an, an archaeologist explorer, and we start digging and digging and digging. Now, if you are socializing while you are storytelling, and you need some space to do the digging, well, you can gently remove yourself from the situation, go somewhere, maybe the bathroom, investigate the source of this saboteur. It's really worth it. These stories can ruin our life or transform it if and when we take time to really look at our stories, we will discover what it takes to transcend them completely by simply seeing how your story is an illusion of the past that the ego is stubbornly holding on to. You are instantly free of it. Once you identify it, it's gone. Freedom comes from finding the space between you and your story. When your story arises and you feel it pulling you in, imagine that you are taking five large steps back away from your story, just as if you were stepping back from an angry person, growling dog, or some feisty child who has had too much sugar. Take one small step if you cannot take a large one, And with each step, take a deep breath of air and become the observer. Look at your story like you were watching a movie or TV show. Recognize that it's just that and nothing more. Some drama being played over and over and over on your ego's video screen. And now that you are separate from that story, it's easier to see the truth of it and be free from it. Most of us, we don't step away from it. We're in it. And we're so used to being in it that we don't know how to step away from it. You're not ignoring it. You're watching it, see? You're seeing how it operates. What's it doing? You know, this story that I repeat over and over again to myself and others. When you or any of us identify the story that we are most attached to, you know, know, the one that you repeat most often, each time you start repeating it, simply state one thing that you are grateful for instead. Use the gratitude to master Refocus your mind on what is working in your life and what you are grateful for right now. There are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of things that you can be grateful for no matter where you are or who you are. You can be grateful that the sun rose this morning to heat our planet, that you have clean drinking water, or that you are breathing with life in this moment instead of dying. The list goes on and on and on. Just look around at this world. Notice the beauty, the detail, the exquisite abundance. The more time we spend in gratitude, the faster our ego stories will die and become distant memories. When you're in a place of gratitude, you automatically send out positive energetic vibrations, which in turn magnetize to you the kind of positive, uplifting things you want to manifest. And once you leave your story behind, you can see the truth of your existence 
and experience total freedom from your ego's suffering and limiting beliefs. Doing this will help you be liberated once and for all from your stories. What do you do? You do it. You go for it. You don't try it. And you realize you can do it. What is the main... What do you believe? The main focus with this species in this now moment is what, what do you believe the focus is? What is... What do people focus on? Well, security. Many different forms of security. Now picture this. We've got about 8.5 billion, give or take, on this planet right now, just on the surface. And... We've got all this programming. We all know about the programming. So people are constantly worried about security. Feeling secure. Being secure. Isn't it ironic? You, somebody that professes over and over and over again that they want to feel secure, right? Nothing wrong with that. They just don't know who and what they are then they'd be secure forever if they did, when they do. Where does the focus go? Well, in this country, we all know where. Money. Money is attached to security. So if people feel, well, I have all this money, I will be secure. Question is, will you really be secure? How many people have you met that, and it doesn't have to be direct or friendship or anything, but that you've interacted with or met, that from your perspective are well off, okay? And you notice that they seem to be insecure. That they don't feel at ease or at peace. You can pick up those frequencies, you know. Don't poo-poo them. A lot of people poo-poo them. You, you, you can sense those frequencies. And you go, wow. Here's this being and in your eyes seems to have what you want, right? Got this and that, and all this money. And... But they seem to be, you know what I mean, kind of scared. Not, it's not heavy on the surface. It's kind of deep down. But they seem to be scared, fearful. Where are they living? Where are they existing with themselves? You go mind. Heart minded, you you really don't have a care in the world. You're at peace. And you're not wanting because you know anything that you desire is yours already. And then you realize that I'm part of everything. So why wouldn't it be that way? Uh, 
a great quote by Mary Manon Morrissey. What we believe to be true moves through the lens of our mind as living energy and becomes the reality of our lives. If we believe ourselves to be limited, we get to be right about that. But it is not our ultimate truth. We are educated on this planet to chase our tails. I don't care if you've got 20 PhDs. Ace them all. Thesis is and all. We are trained in educational format to chase our tails, to have limitations, to believe that many things aren't possible. Guess what? You believe that way, that's going to be your life. Every one of us on this planet are supremely abundant. Now, of course, you would have some people say, yeah, sure, Uh uh-huh. We put up walls all around us to reflect that abundance away from us. Now, that might sound a little quite strange to some. The response would be, why in the heck would I do that? Because you don't love yourself. You don't know yourself. You haven't accepted all aspects of yourself, good, bad, and indifferent. How can you love yourself when you haven't accepted all parts of you? Can't. So, because we're so immersed with the ego mind, what do we do? We build walls. And these walls block us from our true natural state of being. Abundance. It's the only reason why those of us on this planet suffer. It's the only reason. Now these walls that we build, that you build, are shields protecting your heart from getting hurt, conned, deceived, or abandoned again. I'm sure you've come across some people where those walls are super thick. Remove any shielding around your heart and imagine tossing it into a great roaring bonfire. Allow your armor to melt away. Now, the shielding may feel like it's still there or coming back. Simply invite the fire inside of you to consume your heart and any walls it has. Breathe deeply and physically open your arms wide, inviting this fiery purification to remove all defenses from your life. Now, when you feel that all shields are removed, with several deep breaths, imagine pulling everything in this entire universe into your heart. All creation is pouring 
into your heart the stars, the planets, earth, and all beings feel how truly abundant life really is. See, we, whatever has been done can be undone. We can undo this programming if we want to. And the only way you're going to want to is to be aware of your heart-mind and stay there as much as you can. You've heard me say this over and over again. We all deserve the best of everything. It's the programming that gets in the way. People say they don't deserve this, they don't deserve that. They're not special. You know, they're not powerful. They're weak. So what happens when you lower your field of vibration to that? Well, you're going to get that. You proclaim you're an abundant being, really, truly deep within. One of the best ways to remain in the flow of abundance is to practice knowing that you, all of us, are an abundant, infinite being that will never die. And sense the, that sense abundance is a flow of highly charged, positive, infinite energy. The more we open up, feel this energy, share it with others, the more we will naturally feel this abundance inside ourselves. In the past, many of us were conditioned into scarcity thinking. And to truly break this old programming, it's, it's very old programming, for five minutes a day, do this exercise. Imagine opening your attention to all that surrounds you. Everything, all of it, in high detail. Tune, you know, your little dial, right? You tune into the abundance of things, nature, people on this planet. Tune into that and know that that create they're creating everything for you. They're giving you food, water, and all the pleasures that come with living in society. Now, feel this abundance of support around you now, letting it touch your very core. Allow in the abundance of joy, pleasure opportunities, laughter into your heart. You are already deeply, eternally loved and will always be deeply, eternally loved by the abundance of this universe. It's never not. All of us are. Isn't that, isn't that ironic or crazy? You look at all the strife, starvation, pain, suffering, hatred, anger, really, depression, anxiety, fear, worry, stress. What the heck is going on, one would say. When you feel this abundance of support around you, right in this now, letting it touch your very core, letting and, and allowing in the abundance of joy, pleasure, opportunities, and laughter into your heart, you are already deeply, eternally loved and will always be deeply, eternally loved by the abundance of this universe. Consciously open the door now. 
and proclaim the truth to this universe by stating, I am a truly abundant being. Shout this message out over and over, internally and externally, until you feel that it has penetrated deeply enough into your soul. No matter how you write it, sing it, speak it, see it, feel it, it is the now. This is the only place that we will find true peace. The only place that we will find true abundance. The only place where we will finally discover the omnipotently powerful, true, manifesting masters that every one of us are. No debate, no doubt. Ego mind will try to convince you otherwise. It doesn't stand a chance. Remember, we are moving into a higher frequency by choice, by choice. Not, a, not some flash that's going to do it all for us. This is part of what we've created for us to experience, for us to evolve into a higher place of spirit. Any of us can instantly, I mean on the turn of a dime, become a channel for the highest vibration in this universe, love, by gifting your time spontaneously to someone who needs it. We are here to serve. Obviously, we serve ourselves so that we can serve others. We're all one. Look, now, you just kind of feel this. Feel it. Feel it. Give a hug to someone lacking love. Well, how many people are going to do that? Don't know, do we? Share new inspirational ideas with others. Email someone this inspiring information. Give presents to people just for fun and share something beautiful you have created, like maybe music or poetry you will spontaneously feel better when you reconnect with this joy of giving freely. Freely! Not encumbered. Just imagine what your world will be and feel like when everybody feels that there is an abundance of love, money, energy, and joy to share freely amongst everyone. Be the first to start the trend. All greed fear, and lack will be instantly eliminated when we all share freely from this truly abundant state. It will be impossible to feel poor at the end of the day having given your love and light away which does not deplete you, by the way, as your ego mind would try to convince you of that. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close this out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Relaxed into the body. Focus on your breath rising and falling. We are always on the right track. When you believe that you are worthy of having something big, the credibility of that belief will tend to fluctuate. Just like riding a roller coaster. In the morning, you were going up. In the afternoon, you're sailing straight down. So do not get too attached to where you think you should be on the track. Your job in this life is simply to remove your white-knuckled grip from those sticky handlebars, sit way back in your power chair, and totally enjoy this wild ride. Life is supposed to be this way. We. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here tonight, Wednesday, August 21st, 2024, a little after 3 9.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our Time for Change call. And Thursday, August 22, 2024. And we'll have to 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our Global Guided Meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest eternal gratitude at all times no matter what's going on within you or outside of you open your heart allow the magic to flow in <laughs>